It's best that any reader starts from the first chapter, builds that foundation from the basic terms to understanding financial statements, and then building further on that knowledge and then getting on to financial analysis, budgeting, forecasting, management accounting versus financial accounting, and then heading into that last chapter. Hello there and welcome to the My Future Business Show. This is the show that gets you in front of your best audience and keeps you there. I hope you're doing wonderfully well and I just want to take a second of pause to thank you for joining us and for supporting the show. It's great to again have you here joining us today. Now on today's show, I have the pleasure of welcoming best-selling author, podcast host and CFO, Shahan Sheriff. Welcome to the show, Shahan. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for having, having me on your show. Thank you for joining Good. me, Sean. Now, you and I are going to be talking about your latest book called Accounting Fundamentals, A Non-Finance Manager's Guide to Finance and Accounting. Now, um, prior to the call, I touched briefly on your extensive background. I was going through your bio and I was really, really impressed with, uh, I guess, the studious nature of your background. We're going to be talking about that momentarily. But prior to that, we always take a bit of, a bit of time, Shahan, to learn a little bit about you. So where are you calling in from today? I'm in Dubai. I'm Dubai. originally from Sri Lanka, but have been living and working in Dubai since 2008. You know what? That that place blows my mind. I remember seeing um, time lapse pictures where there was just a beach, and now there's this metropolis of expansive, beautiful um, buildings and and architecture and layouts. What's the most exciting part of it for you? I think it's the visionary leadership. I mean, uh, how they've transformed this place just from sand to what it is today. It's been an incredible journey. I mean, people who come like to Dubai, say after about a period of two years or three years, see a massive change, which you would never see in any other part of the world. So that's been the transformation and that's been the story of Dubai, which has been great. And uh, the way they take care of people, you know, the quality of life, uh, yep here is great i mean i don't think you can match it with any other part of the world that's incredible look you know and the palm trees for islands there must be some wickedly skilled individuals over there who's some of the people that you uh, that that you admire that live in the local area over there uh in terms of the local area i mean in terms of the as a country i i really admire the leadership but in terms of the the people here i mean Every person here is different. I mean, yeah. there's people living here from every nationality in the world, uh, pretty much. So almost, yeah, more than 190 countries in the world. There are so each person is diverse, and there's so much that you could learn from each each and every uh, person, and that also helps that multicultural society. Uh, you know, you help you learn from different societies, different cultures. Mm. So I just, uh, say any put anyone over the other but i think if there's there's a contribution from each and every person here from from the garbage collector to you know the top ranked ceo to everyone's got some respect and uh, you know i mean something they're, to they're, offer. Contributing well, they're contributing very well towards the the success story of dubai and See, the way when you talk about the success story of dubai shahan i always think about the things that i've seen on the television unfortunately i've not been able to make my way there yet but i know that it's always hot and one thing that struck me is that you have this um maybe you have multiples of them but indoor snow um arenas is that true that's right yes right now the weather is it's it's lovely honestly but uh, yeah the the hot times are coming ahead uh, i mean the summer starts from about june july onwards uh, so yeah there are about four or five months which are which is pretty hot but other than that uh, the, the weather is good but it's mostly i mean as long as you're mostly indoors during that you're peak right. summer period uh, especially during the day uh, yep. mornings and nights are, are okay or at least manageable yep. but during the day in that peak summer period as long as you're indoors you're, you're, you're fine because you're fine. every Every building has got AC and uh, yeah well it seems to be a common story around the world doesn't it now tell me a little bit about growing up where did you grow up I was born and brought up in uh, Colombo in Sri Lanka uh, and uh, until I was about 23 24 years I was uh, I, I did all my studies there I started my first job there so yes memories back from Sri Lanka now, I know, um, again, you have a very studious background. Does that give you much time for hobbies and recreations and sports? What do you, what do you enjoy doing? So in terms of hobbies and sports, uh, I love watching tennis and tennis, football and cricket. These are the three sports that uh -huh. I really love. But uh, given my priorities of late, uh, especially <laughs> 
publishing the book. Uh, I don't have much free time, to be honest. Uh-huh. Yeah, whenever I get an opportunity, those are the things that I, I, I generally spend. I, I love the playing. Sport. I love playing cricket. I actually uh, used to play a lot of turf cricket, but I also enjoy indoor cricket. Is that a thing where you live? Yes, it is. It so is. in back in Sri Lanka, I mean, cricket is like a craze. It's it's more than a sport, uh, to be <laughs> honest. And even I did uh, play it for some time. Uh, I mean, of course, just for uh, from for for a club. Club cricket. And, yeah. Yes, club cricket. And uh, a bit for school. I mean, not not representing school, but there were like house matches and stuff. Yeah. Which I played for. And then after moving here, I didn't play, but uh, but I follow cricket a lot. So what do you think you are? You're a better bowler or batter? What's your thing? I'm a better bowler, but I'm I'm an all rounder. Yeah, yeah. But a bowling. Fantastic. I love these sorts of. I love this part of the call, Shahan, because it gives me some insight into the people behind the business and the book. So I really do appreciate it. Now. Tell me, you you were talking about Sri Lanka where you grew up there. Was were, were times tough when you were growing up? Tell us a little bit about your childhood. It was super tough because there was a war that was going on on one end, and oh. uh, people were living out of absolute fear because there were bombs that was that were being thrown at it. I mean, on various days at various times. I myself have seen a few bombs that have taken place. Whilst I was at school, you know, there was a there was a bombing that took place just next to our school. I've seen people run out of fear, you know terrified seeing certain things you know people dying on the spot wow. and we've been watching this stuff on tv uh, seeing these on newspapers and seeing it live at some s- certain situations so uh, yeah it was it was a very different environment growing up in sri lanka but on the other hand the beauty of sri lanka uh, is unmatchable i, I guess because it's got so much of natural beauty uh, so much of natural uh, I mean, like rivers, streams, and so on. So, and the greenery. I mean, Amazing. those tend to yeah, uh, uh, those tend to give you uh, st- uh, relieves your stress basically. And uh, you know, uh, so you have to both these things on both spectrums. And you know, it, it it was a balance between these two on how how we lived our lives. But uh, I mean, it was a very enjoyable period as well, given that uh, the entire family was there. And I mean, on on my side of things, I've got quite big families on both my sides, yeah. mother's side and father's side. So yeah. uh, you tend to move a lot in terms of, you know, whether it's functions, whether it's gatherings. So it was, I mean, we were very united as well as a family. So uh, that, that helped a lot. Uh, to overcome these difficult uh, situations whenever there was something that that, that took place. So there must have been a a significant cultural shift from Sri Lanka through to where you are now. Tell us a little bit about the differences and are there any commonalities? Uh, In Sri Lanka as well, it's it's a multicultural uh, country. So had majority Buddhists and Sinhalese, but uh, there were there was quite a lot of Muslims, Tamils and Christians as well. So uh, I mean, that's the commonality between Sri Lanka and uh, Dubai or the UAE, where it's, where it's a multicultural uh, environment. Yep. But in terms of the differences, uh, I guess, uh, for, unfortunately, for whatever reason, I think it's that visionary leadership that's missing back in Sri Lanka. Right. Uh, and for like 70 plus years, it's been like two different parties that have ruled the country. And unfortunately, there are, I mean, it's Division. not the place that most people uh, envision that the country has gone into. So. There could have been so many changes that were implemented, but unfortunately, the country is where it is. But at least on a positive note, over the last uh, one, two years post-COVID, uh, I think that the country was probably at the lowest point uh, since independence. And I think since then, at least uh, looking positively, I think things have improved uh, quite well. And quite a bit. the hope is that, you know, things continue to improve this way. So that's Well, I love that. Wait. I love the fact that you've mentioned hope because it tells me a lot about mindset and, you know, your visions for the for the future. Tell me, what do you think about uh, the importance of mindset? I, again, I know that you're very studious and it gets me to thinking, how is somebody so committed to achieving so many goals that you have thus far, which I'd like you to share with us in, in a moment, you know, some of those qualifications, but does mindset play a part in, you know, staying committed? Absolutely. To me, honestly, mindset is everything. So whether you listen to Tony Robbins or to Dean Graziosi or to Alex Homozi or to any of these prominent speakers, motivational, yeah. inspirational or coaches, one thing they say is it's 80% about mindset 
and it's 20 percent about the tools and and the hows and the whys and so on so if you have a great mindset learning anything isn't an obstacle and uh, there was also a book that i read uh, a few years ago uh, by a brain coach by the name of jim quick oh, yeah. the book uh, the book's title is limitless Yep. And in that book, he goes on to explain, uh, you know, the functionality of the brain and the mindset and, you know, how you could learn anything. So in back in school, you know, each of us, we've learned so many different subjects, so many different areas. But one thing that we've not learned is how to learn. And, ah. uh, you know, that's that that also goes with, uh, you know, having a strong mindset. So to me, answering your question, mindset is everything to me. And uh, thankfully, I've been able to have a great mindset. I've been able to stay focused and organized. And uh, I think that's the result that's that's coming out today that uh, you know I've been able to publish my book and achieve bestseller ranking. Thankfully, uh, with the help of so many individuals and people in my life, including my parents, my family, and so on. Uh, and uh, also, it helps me to focus on the next big things that I want to achieve, breaking the boundaries that I've that I've had, you know, then achieving that next level of success. So that's that's the target, at least. But uh, in order to do all of that, you need to have a great mindset for sure. Absolutely great feedback. Thank you so very much. Now, I touched a little earlier, Shahan, on your extensive uh, educational, uh, you know, professional background qualifications and so forth. I'm wondering, for the sake of context, if you'd be able to share some of those uh, significant qualifications with the audience. Yeah, sure. So I was never a person who was into studies when I was young, uh, <laughs> but something that triggered, you know, the difficult time that we had in life uh, during my ordinary levels, that was the transformative period in my entire life, looking back. Yeah. Uh, in terms of finances, we were, we were kind of low. So that, and as the eldest in a family of three, uh, it was my responsibility that I had to put up my hands up and, you know, do something about it. So, uh, in low double digit figure marks uh, i was is where i was at when i was in uh, year 9 and from there on once i started focusing and with a strong determination uh, my marks started to improve term on term uh, to the extent that i got some really good results during my ordinary level which i then carried on and that gave me the confidence to you know uh, continue my education even further so in the advanced level stream i, I achieved very good results as well yeah. I got admitted into the National University, which is a very rare occurrence. There's only a number of people who get admitted. For whatever reason, uh, unfortunately, my father uh, had a bypass surgery. So I had to, uh, I mean, not intentively, but yeah. uh, uh, I had to look at uh, working as well during that period. So with that focus, I lost focus on my uh, education at that point. Uh, because I had to, I had to be the breadwinner in the family. Of course. So I was not able to complete like two subjects in my final year. I know it sounds very strange, very silly, like uh, having attended four years in the university, but that was the regret that I then carried uh, subsequently. And then I motivated myself back again to get into studies. So I completed a qualification called CIMA from the UK, uh, yep. Chartered Institute of Management Accountants. Yep. I then completed the CPA Australia qualification and membership. And then I got into an MBA, a Master of Business Administration, which mm -hmm. was a general uh, qualification, general, uh, special, not, a, not a specialized one, but a general MBA. Yep. And then a few years later, I, uh, I did uh, a, another Master of Business Administration qualification on artificial intelligence and data science. I know nowadays everyone is talking about AI oh, and data science. But this was, yeah, this was like three years prior to the entire chat GPT and all this talk that came up. Uh, I think that was a very useful qualification that I did. I learned a lot of different things. And uh, after that, uh, I still wanted to further pursue my education. And there was only one thing that my mother asked me before she passed away of uh, cancer uh, three years ago. Mm. And that was a doctorate. And like just a month, month and a half before she passed away, I enrolled into the program. I'm now halfway through that. Oh, wow. So I'm pursuing my doctorate program, which I really want to do and complete. Uh, you know, that was the only thing that she ever asked me. Oh, and uh, that's yeah, incredible, that's, you know, because I remember walking across the stage, you know, tipping your, your hat and all the rest of it. And, you know, that moment in time when you walk across that stage, you're going to be so proud of your uh, you know, the, the achievements and the fact that your your mum will be watching you. Um, how long away are you? 
I'm halfway through yeah, and halfway. I'm right at the end of the first phase. So the next phase uh, is where I have to complete my own research and thesis. thesis. So yep. yeah, I'm just finishing up the first phase of it. Uh, there's just two more modules to be completed. And uh, aside from the doctorate, I also enrolled into more than 100, 200 uh, yes. other courses <laughs> uh, into various different topics, whether it's from email marketing to accounting to finance to time management, stress management, you name it. I mean, post summits and so on so <laughs> i've come to many of them but uh, but I, for me honestly education is a passion and it never stops there's no age barrier you know uh, there's no time you, you can do it any day any time at any age that's, yeah that's, that's fantastic what I, well it's funny because there's lots of times where i felt like just chucking in the towel and not continuing to study do you, how do you motivate yourself do you ever get to the point i know you just talked about being a it being a passion but what would you tell other people that are aspiring to be better than what they are uh, but they struggle with study i think it's all about building great habits and uh, with that i think there was a great another great book that i read a few years ago called atomic habits uh, by james Clear. Yeah, i think is yes yeah, great book and uh, that's a great book it it really helps you uh, inculcate great habits especially the morning routine and any other habits that you need to be a great person so uh, it's small small things but it all adds up end of the day and uh, you know the, the the more that you practice a habit uh, you know each day it's like on autopilot that's yeah, it that's how it, yeah it becomes normal that's how it's explained in the book and that's how it is in practice as well from whatever i've practiced so I've been doing a number of things uh, in terms of morning rituals to, uh, you know, other habits, even drinking more water and there are a few basic things like this. So all these things have helped me to stay focused, have a great mindset, think of my ambitions, uh, set up goals and work towards those goals and breaking each goal into small daily, simple steps, basically. So people get overwhelmed by thinking of a massive goal that they set up. And that's when, like most people, set up their goals at the beginning of the year. You know, in January, everyone's <laughs> busy setting up their goals. But um, like, like right now in March, I don't think even half, um, a majority of them may have even forgotten what their Absolutely. goals were. Yeah. Come December, they again try to reflect. You know, okay, I've not achieved most of these again, and this goes on year after year. So, uh, for me, I set up goals. I I break them down into uh, quarterly, monthly, and daily actionable steps, and I, I follow them. And I've also journaled, I mean, because I journal a lot, uh, you know, it helps me to stay focused and monitor and measure where I am on a daily basis. So there's a quote, there's a popular quote, which goes by, you know, what gets measured gets managed. So if you don't measure your progress where you are, you will never be able to manage it. So for me, that's been standing true. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been practicing that. Yeah, great feedback. Thank you so very much. Now, you talked a little bit about, you know, that routine. I'm wondering, are you an early riser? What's a day look like for you, Sean? I never used to be an early riser, uh, but it ha so happens that I need to wake up early to drop my son to school. <laughs> of from prayers, of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I don't go to the gym. I never used to go to the gym as well previously, but uh, now on and off, at least I go to the gym. I prefer walking. But uh, either of these, you know, I think is a, is a good uh, daily habit. Yeah. I've not been uh, doing it daily, to be honest, but at least on and off, if you can do it, uh, or even some ex some form of exercise or physical activity that can keep you, that can start your day off uh, well, is, is a good habit to start off with. And plus drinking lots of water, lots of water. right at the start of the day. Yeah. And the other thing that I've been doing is trying to handle the toughest task right at the beginning of the day. And uh, this is something that Jim Quick also mentions very often, trying to, you know, uh, do that first, that toughest thing, first thing yes. in the day. Yeah. And uh, aside, uh, there's also a few other things like, you know, when you when you stay focused on certain tasks, try to avoid multitasking up until maybe last, maybe two years prior, you used to think that, you know, multitasking will increase my efficiency, but it's not the case. Uh, I mean, I've tried it and tested it. <laughs> and, and it really is the case. So if, if, for example, just to give a very simple example, if I tell somebody to write numbers from 1 to 10 and then ask them to write the alphabet from A to Z separately, and if you time them and calculate it, you'll arrive at a lower time versus asking them to write 1 
A to B and so on. You know, yeah. just just that. So it's a very simple exercise which I did when 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 I was reading the book of Jim Quick and followed some of his courses, and it really struck my mind. You know that multitasking isn't really actually helping you because it the mind doesn't work that way. Mind is not set up that way. Mind no. is set up to work on one task at a time. So that's something I've avoided. Uh, and it helps to reduce the stress. So that's another habit that I follow. And another thing that I also do is uh, try to take uh, regular breaks. So there's something called the Pomodoro technique. We are, uh, you know, for, for about every half an hour. So different speakers give different timelines, but, yeah. but the one that I follow is like for every half an hour. So if I take like a two to three minute break, at least you can go up to even five minutes that helps you, you know, uh, stay focused once you get back again. But otherwise, if you're like sitting right throughout for about one hour, two hours, three hours, you know, uh, you, you don't become efficient. Or no. you, you don't end up being very productive uh, staying that long. Thank you for the feedback. Love it. Now, uh, you earlier touched on your son and dropping him off to school. Now, as a father myself, I always think about legacy. I always think about how can I, um, you know, help my sons be better in every way than I am today. What do you think is the one most important lesson that you would like to leave for your son or your children? Yes, uh, so the, the most important lesson is to stay honest to yourself. Uh, you know, I mean, you, there's, I mean, yes, there are so many people looking at you and there are so many people you want to impress and so on. But as long as you can stay honest to yourself, I think there's nothing else that matters, to be honest. Yeah. And when you when you say staying honest to yourself, then that will help you stay focused. That will help you stay. Uh, that will help you to achieve your goals, to be uh, committed, dedicated. All these things will come subsequently. But I think if you can stay honest to yourself, and do the best that you can, and be the best version of yourself, there's nothing like that. That's all you different can ask people for. Have different, yeah, different people have different capabilities. But end of the day, if, if each of us as human beings can be the best version of ourselves, I think the world will be a much better place. Now, it's interesting because I, I know that you used to dislike accounting and now you're an accountant. I, I know you've told me a little bit about the story, but was there a battle inside your mind having to go from someone who didn't like this to liking it? It was an absolute frustration, to be <laughs> honest. And that came about because I missed the first few lessons in my class uh, when accounting was chosen, when I chose accounting as a subject. Yeah. And the thing is, I chose, there were a few optional subjects. I can't remember from which subjects I had to choose it from, but uh, this was an optional subject. So I chose, chose accounting. And uh, I, I thought I'll enjoy it because it was numbers and I, I, I loved maths and so on. Yeah. But then I fell sick. I think it was just a flu and a few weeks I was off from school. And I think it was just the basics that were taught during that period. And with, as with most subjects, if you lose the basics, uh, you know, uh, whatever comes after that, it sounds like you shit. miss so, it. <laughs> <laughs> especially with accounting, the moment you lose that very basic fundamentals, like the debits and the credits, and you know, yep. it, it, everything else sounded like Greek to me. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was it built a lot of frustration in me, not just for accounting, but even on my other subjects. It really demotivated me. So that can happen with any subject or any any learning for anyone. You know, one thing can put you off in even in life, you know, a single thing in a particular day can put you off for the rest of the day. So it's important that it doesn't. But practically, that's 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 what something happens? that can happen to anyone. So that really put me off in terms of my education. My marks started deteriorating and uh, there came a point that, you know, I really wanted to myself. I, I really wanted to solve this uh, issue. Because my marks were just heading only one way, which was down, unfortunately. So, <laughs> that, like I said, there was one there was one day that I really keenly focused on and made uh, made a key decision that I really wanted to transform uh, this. And uh, and I think yes, I was able to do that, thankfully. See, that's the thing about commitment, isn't it? Thank you again for sharing, Sean. Now, just so that we understand, because uh, the people that are listening to this episode today may not have a background in accounting and finance. So, wonder I'm wondering. Uh, from, a, I guess, a very fundamental level. What's the difference between finance and accounting? So if you think of art and science, right, accounting tends to look at the past and it's more like a, more like a science, right. whereas finance is more like an art and is more futuristic. So 
When we talk about accounting, we talk about how much was spent last month, how much of profit did we achieve uh, in the last month or the last year. Whereas when it comes to finance, we talk about forecasting our cash flows for the next year. We talk about expecting a profit for the next three years to five years. And, and in a very basic way, this, this, is, this is the difference. So history versus the future. Okay, yeah. uh, thank you very much for sharing. Now, you, you talk a lot about automation in your field. Is that, a, is that an important thing? I think it's not only an important thing in finance, but it's starting to become an important area in every segment, in every area of work, in life, and in every area, basically. So whether it's from health to you know business administration to managing a company to even managing your own day-to-day -day tasks, I think it's, it's increasingly becoming a big uh, part of each one's life. I know there are a few advocates who don't like a lot of automation, uh, probably my wife included, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I'm, I'm I'm really seeing it uh, move in that direction. Yeah, and I think it, it's it's yes, there are certain areas where automation can be a bad thing, but but I think as long as you understand where you can use it most effectively and to help you become more productive, I think that's those are the areas that you should one should really focus on and uh, you know look to Im look to implement them. So whether it's whether it's even when you're typing an email, you know there are certain, there are so many softwares out there. You can just hit a button and it will draft your reply. Yeah. I mean, just if you just give it a small description, you know this is what you want to say, and it will draft you like an entire paragraph or it's two, crazy, three paragraphs. Yeah, entire reply. So you don't even have to do that. You can even automate your email rep replies through Chat GPT and Zapier. There are, I mean, I mean I've I've taken a number of AI related courses. So. <laughs> I've, I've, I've come across so many different tools. Then even this podcast that we're doing, you know, after the podcast, if I if I have access to the recording, I can just download it, upload it to a, a tool, and it will break it down into maybe 15 to 20 different reels. And yes. I can then upload them onto different uh, social media platforms or even schedule it. I don't have to so upload I wonder, it. Then and it's, it's very interesting. What sort of so What's the software that you use to do that? Uh, it's a... It's a tool called Video, B I D Y O, is what I recall. Uh, ah. Yeah, if you just let you should. Uh, yeah. So video. V I D dot I O. Yes, that's right. Fantastic. That's yeah, like I mean, because I'm right into that, but I always think to myself, one half of me, Shahan, says I'm really excited about AI, but the other, I'm terrified. Where do you sit on that spectrum? I'm excited to be honest, mm -hmm. and I've I've started to use it for a lot of things. Not for writing my books. Uh, recently, for whatever reason, I received <laughs> one review by by someone who had purchased my book, saying that this is an entirely Chat GPT written book, which is not the case. I've even received my copyrights. So I know there are so many authors there who write books with Chat GPT, but uh, I, I I mean I haven't still gone to that level. No. But uh, in terms of automating a lot of other things, uh, you know, if someone has purchased a book, you know, triggering that into updating it into a Google Sheet and updating certain information, those kind of automations is what I'm uh, what I'm doing. Uh, and like what I said on. about the videos being broken into different reels, having the transcriptions generated for those videos, even the descriptions for those uh, reels to be published on social media. I mean, those those kind of stuff I'm okay with and I'm excited uh, and, and looking forward to in terms of further developments in those areas. But yeah, it's, it's a bit of a divided opinion at the moment among mm. most people, but I think it's, it's a debate that will get settled over the next few months, uh, given sure. how extensively most of these companies are investing further into AI and it's becoming part of each and every tool, whether it's Google Meet to Zoom, you know, you, there are different ways in which they use AI. So, and like I said, every part of life, even health, uh, AI is, is, is everywhere. Being used. Well, it's funny, Shahan. I think that human beings are the ultimately uh, the ultimate intelligence, uh, whether or not they want to acknowledge it or not. And I think that teamwork and working together in a business is critically important to achieve, you know, real world results. And put aside AI, tell us a little bit about AI. Uh, sorry, teamwork in your environment. And how important it is yeah for me teamwork has always been an important part uh, whether it's in life or whether it's at work so at home it was a family of us the three i mean me my brother and sister and my parents so 
whatever we did at home, it was all based on teamwork. Whatever we did in at work, um, I, I mean at home, or whether yeah. it was at work. So it was at work when I, I just a few examples. One was at my first job, which was at a company, which was at the premium blue chip company in Sri Lanka called John Keyes Holdings. I was in charge of uh, sorting out the annual report uh, for the award. So basically, there's a chartered accountancy award that's being given out uh, every year. And uh, all the blue chip companies apply for that award. And I was made in charge of you know sorting it out in that particular year. And as a team, I think, <laughs> I mean, it was even though I was made in charge, uh, and I evaluated a number of different uh, annual other similar competitor annual reports, and we came up with, you know, certain deficiencies uh, that prevailed in our annual report and areas that we could further improve on. It was more about a team. I mean, uh, it was there, there were a number of days that we worked very late, like even like one, two o'clock in the morning during that one, two week period. But when we worked as a team, there were so many suggestions that came up uh, that nobody of us individually thought of but when we worked as a team they all came up together for some i mean somehow like almost magically uh, which we then implemented uh, and uh, we achieved the best annual report award in the industry in the uh, in, in our industry in that wow. particular year and that was like for the first time that it happened in a number of years so that kind of really showed me that you know teamwork means a lot and uh, it's like one plus one is greater than two. That's the synergy that we talk about, right? When you come in as a team together. And likewise, right. even at my current work, it's it's more about a teamwork culture that we have. So whether it's a finance team or whether it's uh, whether it's operations team, we all come together in, and make certain decisions on a weekly basis, uh, sometimes on a daily basis in terms of making those critical decisions. And uh, we have regular catch-ups as a team. So I think the more that you are oriented towards a team, it will help you achieve your own goals plus achieve the team's goals as well. So it's when you have this disconnect that you kind of become stressed out and uh, nobody achieves anything at that moment. And it's not a win-win situation. So end of the day, we as human beings always look to want to achieve a win-win situation. And that's one of the key elements that's also mentioned in the book the seven habits of highly effective people. Uh, if you haven't read that book, I think that's oh, another yes, great book. And in that book, it talks about, you know, these win-win situations. So I think a win-win situation can easily be achieved if you uh, focus on teamwork and work as a, as part of a team. You're and that's why I like some team sports as well. Uh, yeah, you're very inspirational. I, I see so many great uh, foundational pillars that you've created for your own life. And it must be enlightening and motivational for those that are working around you. And it's a real credit to you. Now, I'd love to know, Sean, how did you get to be featured on ABC, NBC, Fox, USA Today, CBS and others? That's that's a, a massive achievement. Yes, so as soon as I achieved the bestseller ranking, I published uh, a media release and then I got picked out uh, through LinkedIn by somebody. And then I published uh, a number of media releases back then. And uh, I think it's 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 more to do with the book and the achievements that I've been able to achieve uh, subsequent to it uh, that has resulted in all of this publicity. Uh, but all of this publicity, you know, you could you could gain it one day, you could lose it another day. So as long as we don't get carried away with that and it affects our ego, uh, as long as we do good things and do the right things the right way, you know, these, these things will come. And I always believe these are results of your hard work and not something that, that, are, that are just short term and temporary. So that's the bigger picture that I look at. Uh, I mean, yes, it's nice to have all these media releases and stuff, mm. but end of the day, I just want to do uh, the good stuff that I know of and try to help people as much as possible in my capacity in the way that I could. I'd love to take a bit of a deep dive into the book. But prior to that, uh, I wonder if it actually helps, you know, managers and just general sort of line level people interpret financial data. And what does that actually mean? Yes. So from my experience, I've seen a lot of people not having the knowledge of finance and accounting and that affecting both their personal lives in a, in a big way and ending up with lots of borrowings in even in terms of their credit cards or even bank borrowings mm. and even in terms of their work uh, or business uh, their entrepreneurs fail to understand the ba very basics of finance and accounting and then they tend to make wrong decisions and that leading them to you know long, wrong investment decisions wrong uh, 
pricing decisions, and then eventually leading up even to bankruptcy. I've seen a number of businesses, uh, both in Dubai as well as overseas, where people people who don't have the knowledge, basic knowledge of finance and accounting, you know, uh, heading out that way, unfortunately. Whilst there are very few entrepreneurs, very, very few that I've seen who have, who have a strong knowledge in finance and accounting, though not from a finance and accounting background per se, but who've been extremely successful. So this diverse set of people that I've seen is really what led me to write the book, write the book and get into the accounting for non-finance managers subject per se. So uh, I thought, you know, at least I've got 18 plus years of knowledge, experience and skills. Why not put this to good use? And I think during that COVID period, where it was also the toughest period in my life, I thought, you know, this is the time that I really need to give back to community, uh, give back to the community and do whatever I could in, in whatever possible way that I could. And it was, honestly, it was not initially about the money, about writing the book and earning that royalties. It was more about helping people and uh, seeing how I can contribute in, to the society. And now that the book is doing well, thankfully, I'm, I'm looking at the next few areas of, you know, building out a course, the audible version of the book, and whatever other ways that I could help people with. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love the fact that you're creating different formats because different people learn in different ways, don't they? Exactly. Yeah. Some like it uh, more visual, some like it uh, more uh, audio based, some like it just reading. So yes, you're right. Different people, different people have different learning patterns and preferences. So tell me a little bit about, um, I guess, the you went from disliking reading to now becoming that best selling author. There seems to be some similarities between, you know, your dislike of accounting and, and dislike of book writing to having amazing results. How did that make you feel when you achieved those results? Yes, <laughs> it seems like you've done a lot of home homework on me. Yes, that that's another area that I really hate. That <laughs> uh, uh, I never picked up a book at all ever, uh, and in fact, I'm writing about this story in a, as part of a chapter in another book that is to be published oh, over the right. next few months. Uh, but coming back to your question, yes, uh, I hated reading. But then uh, I think during that COVID period, uh, where we had less, much less social engagements, we had to do something. I plus I also have seen uh, how passionate my son has been in reading and I, I think that's come from my wife uh, and for some reason I just picked up a book during that COVID period and started reading I think it was the seven habits of highly effective people and that's that's a great book as well so whilst I was reading that I then got more interested engrossed and ever since I think I've purchased maybe like about 50 different books uh, on personal development and various different subjects and topics. And it's been a great passion since then. So yes, it's the transformation of life, <laughs> hating accounting to loving accounting and being it being part of my life now, plus hating reading to now loving reading or even, uh, you know, following these courses and continuous learning. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a real, been it's, a great yeah. it's a real credit to you how you've turned it around and you've turned this, I guess, this, uh, this issue into a, a real strength of yours. And it seems to me in many conversations that I've had, Shahan, that um, the COVID period seems to be the embryo for amazing things to be happening. Now, tell me, you've got 13 chapters inside the book. Which one's the most important, do you think, for a novice? For me, it's the last chapter because it provides a blueprint for any non-finance manager business owner to implement in their own organization. So it gives certain guidelines and uh, areas to focus on. But to get to that last chapter, like, like I missed the first few parts in the accounting subject whilst, whilst I was studying, if you skip those through and go to the last chapter, it will sound like Greek again. So it's best that any reader starts from the first chapter, builds that foundation from the basic terms to, uh, you know, a bit more in in financial state understanding financial statements and then building further on that knowledge and then getting on to financial analysis budgeting forecasting management accounting versus financial accounting and then heading into that last chapter so that's what i would recommend uh, to follow the sequence uh, in terms of how the book is structured and outlaid i mean i honestly purchased uh, no so many other competitor books i took a look at so many other courses and I understood so many different missing parts and the way the books were organized. So that's why I came up with this particular order sequence. And it was very thought 
uh, I mean, it was a very thoughtful uh, process that I'd followed in putting up this book in this particular manner. So I'd suggest everyone, whoever purchases the book, to follow that sequence. And uh, I'm sure you'll find it interesting and useful at the same time. So, and, and then that last chapter will come in super handy to implement in each of your organizations. Aside from the book, I've also put up a number of uh, bonus resources that can be useful for anyone. I continue to add on resources. I mean, it's not just about the price of the book. I think the value of the book is what I really want to give. So maybe of a course. 10x return, what I, what I aim to ultimately provide. So I continues, continuously add on bonus resources, like summaries in terms of the quizzes that I've got. Uh, you know, I'm continuing to add a few more questions and answers so that people, whilst reading, they also carry back certain learnings and uh, they, they, they keep certain things in their mind and be able to implement them in their respective organizations. Yeah, that's... Uh... As well as well as personally sorry there's certainly a lot to take in here and um within those 13 chapters is it is this a book shahan that you would read uh front cover to back cover or is it is it more of a guide that you can go back to and, and pick what you need at the time uh front cover to back cover but not all at once mm. uh, I, i'd take a break in between probably chapter by chapter is what i'll what i'd recommend uh, but also if if there's someone who's who's uh, studied finance and accounting even for their you know all level ordinary level exams whatever and forgotten a finance and accounting it could then be a guide to you know pick and choose certain areas that that they could implement Fantastic. either way works but I'd, I'd recommend going chapter by chapter for someone who is totally new into finance and accounting but someone who's had at least had some basic knowledge prior maybe forgotten them now and you know you could pick up uh, certain topics uh, randomly now it as a work. As an author myself, I know that it can be one sort of a journey to go from that concept of having a book in your mind to actually seeing it manifest into reality. How did it make you feel when you knew you had finished the book? It was totally self-satisfying more than anything. And my, my book has also been featured at a number of uh, book exhibitions, both uh, in the UAE as well as internationally. So I personally visited the Sharjah uh, international book exhibition and seeing my book prominently displayed there was extremely self-satisfying plus when i first ordered the author copy from amazon and it arrived you know i can't explain that feeling uh it's 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 it's, in, it's incredible you know it's it's completely self-satisfying it just reminds you of all those sacrifices you've made uh, to get the book to where it was and you know and and then subsequently reading all these five star reviews or four star reviews have been amazing you know majority of my reviews thankfully have been uh, positive uh, as always there'll be a few individuals who'll, who'll post something i mean probably not <laughs> even in a quarter of the book uh, but uh, much vast majority of them more than 90 percent have been uh, four or five star reviews so reading those and how it's been how it's helped them transform their lives you know you can't explain these uh, these these feelings there was also one particular reviewer who uh, who had bought this book for for somebody and the feedback that he had got uh, as, as a gift he had bought it and and the feedback that he had got he had shared it on on uh, on amazon as a review uh, then there were a few others who had gifted it but there was one other person who had gifted it to his wife and she really loved it and and there was some great feedback like that so all these put together plus also the direct feedback that you get from your family and friends it's it's completely self-satisfying and me as a person those who know me know that you know I, I i i never even from family or friends or even from my own siblings i wouldn't ask anyone to post anything as as just as a positive review just for the sake of it i always say just post an honest what honest you think? So I think, yeah so as a as a person who focuses on that and having received these positive responses I'm, i mean i'm completely satisfied with what i've been able to achieve and plus it also motivates me to achieve much more to publish much more books and resources and help those whom i can uh, going forward as well well look you're a true north star I, I i i think that many people that are listening to this call today shahan would like to get their hands uh, on a copy of this book and also to learn more about you and get your audio book when that comes out and so forth now um tell us a little bit about your money master hq podcast Yes, so I just started it a few weeks ago. In fact, I've just published only one uh, one episode so far. I have got 
the recordings of three other sessions that are coming up over the next few days. And I've got like more than 50 requests uh, from various different people to be part of this uh, podcast. So the, the, the response has been amazing and way beyond what I ever imagined when I started this just as a hobby. Yep. And, uh, and as a, another way, as an additional way of helping people and, uh, you know, guiding them towards uh, people who could also uh, help them with, with whatever they need in addition to myself just personally so whether it's mindset on money or whether it's the tools and the softwares or the resources or the worksheets that you need to update as a personal as a person in you know managing your personal finances so we, i'm looking at helping people in terms of all these areas at the moment i've started off with the mindset part like i said mindset is everything for me so the first maybe one to 10 episodes would be on mindset yeah. and then subsequently uh, I'll be interviewing people on my podcast show uh, on various other topics. But uh, yeah, I just had the day well been as the first episode. I think that's, I've, I've got great responses on that episode already. Yeah. And the next sessions are also going to be amazing. So I'd encourage anyone to keep an eye on the moneymasterhq.com website. I'll be publishing all those uh, episodes there, plus on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. It's, it's, on, it's on all these places. So Fantastic. That will go, yeah. It should Excellent. be available. Look, uh, you know, if anybody's on the call today and you're listening to this, we're uh, obviously encouraging you to go to moneymasterhq.com and check out all of this information. Now, just in closing, Shahan, where can p- uh, people find your book? Can they find it on your website? Can they, where can they find it? Yeah, if they go to moneymasterhq.com, a link, to my to the Amazon uh, book is available there, or alternatively, they could head on directly to Amazon and type in my name, Shihan Sharif, and they'll see all my books that are published there. And the book uh, that, in particular, that achieved bestseller ranking is is uh, the book of Accounting Fundamentals: A Non Finance Manager's Guide to Finance and Accounting. So, if all that's hard to type, just type my name, Shihan Sharif. <laughs> search and then you'll see my book uh, you, can, you can access it there it's available in paperback hardcover and the ebook uh, at the moment kindle book yep and like the, the, the audible version will be available in, over the next few weeks fantastic that that's great feedback thanks again Shahan. now if you're on this uh, call today you're interested in finance and accounting of which we define the difference today um this is the website you need to go to i'll be making sure that the links are available to you no matter where you listen to this call you're going to be able to find the links back to either the the home page or the amazon uh page to get this book and with all that being said Shahan, great call thank you very much for joining me on the show today it's been an absolute pleasure Rick. thank you for having me Thank <laughs> you.